Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I'm going to be showing how you can take an audio wave pattern and convert it into something more stylistic like this. Now I don't presume that this is a particular thing that you, many of you would want to do or need to do, but really what this tutorial is more about is just showing a number of different techniques that are involved in you know this creation process and hopefully that'll just help you in your other creative pursuits that may benefit from this kind of technique. So let's get to it. So to start off, I have this image of an audio wave, and this is just simply a screen capture uh, after I've dragged a song into my digital audio workstation software and the wave was displayed. Uh, there's a lot of different music players or other audio software that can do the same thing. So uh, it's just whatever software you have and using a tool like Snip to capture the image and put it in PaintShop Pro. So ultimately, I want my image to be in black and white, and I'm not too concerned about losing some fidelity in terms of aliasing. So in this case, the first thing I'm going to do is go to Adjust, Brightness and Contrast, and then go to Threshold. And all this is going to do is just force every pixel to be pure black and pure white, and my dividing line is going to be middle gray, and that seems to do a pretty good job of segregating the wave from the background. So next what I would like to do is have some freedom to, you know, expand the size of the audio image, you know, up and down, and have a little bit more room to be able to split it and move it up and down. So. What I can do is first create a new raster layer, maybe move it to the bottom, and then go to Image Canvas Size. And then with this view up, Lock Aspect Ratio Disabled and Placement in the middle, what I can now do is independently adjust these sliders so that I can adjust how much margin is going to be on the left and the right. And so really what I want is for the left and the right to be small and for the you know height to have a fair amount of margin for that play that I was talking about earlier. So now that we've increased our canvas, we can select our original image, select the pick tool, and you can see these handles have appeared and we can just very simply, you know, stretch this guy to whatever degree of, you know, height we want to give the audio. And then next what we're going to want to do is make a mask. So to make our image a little bit more consistent, I'm going to select the background, choose the flood fill tool, and use a color of white, and just fill that. And then I also want this background to match that background, so I can just select this layer and say image, negative image. And now we have a nice clean white background, and a black audio signal. So then now with that raster layer selected, the audio wave raster layer select selected, we can go to mask and say from image. And this is our one image that we have and I have source luminance selected. And then so what you'll see is it kind of made everything disappear but that's primarily because my mask is inverted since black means don't show through and white means show through. We're kind of doing the opposite of what we want. So what I can do then is select my mask and then once again say image, negative image. And now what we'll see is if we get rid of the background, we have only the black of the audio. So next what we're going to want to do is create that sort of um, pattern. We're going to create a pattern so that we can break up this audio signal into nice separate lines. So to do that, to make a custom pattern that's going to be easy to work with, we'll just go to New. And we're going to make a really small image here, right? Because for a pattern, since it's going to repeat based off of the original image you create, if it's a very simple pattern, you don't need a lot of pixels. And one thing I'll say too is that we're going to create a pattern that's four pixels wide and two or one pixel high. And what you're going to see is that we're just going to create, you know, like a zebra stripe pattern. So I can just get my paintbrush with black selected and just paint half of that black. 
and how big you make this image is going to kind of matter and that's going to all depend on how big your original image is. Um, I know with patterns you can adjust the scale but we don't really want to do that in this case because it's going to add aliasing, like gray regions, and so to avoid that we're always going to make sure the scale is 100 and if we need to change the resolution we're going to do it in the pattern itself. So once we create our pattern that's two pixels black and two pixels white then we can just save it. And where you'll want to save it is someplace where uh, either PaintShop Pro already looks for patterns or just a folder where you can point PaintShop Pro to for patterns that you create. So we can just call this one like Music Lines. And that folder I already have PaintShop Pro pointing at it for custom patterns. So now if I go into first selecting the raster layer and actually we might as well create a new layer because we're going to fill that with the pattern but recognize we want that layer to be above the music but below the mask so then now if i go to pattern um, you know normally you'd have to search for it but you know i happen to be in the right spot and my music lines is right there and notice like i mentioned the scale is at a hundred because if i change the scale we're going to get aliasing but as long as i leave the scale at a hundred it should be exactly the way that i created it so then with that pattern selected and my layer above the music but below the mask selected i can just use the fill tool and then what we can see now is it's created this nice pattern that we were looking for where it kind of whited out some regions and it left other regions black. Now, since I did a two pixel width pattern, what we can see is there's still sort of these like, you know, details of slight angle adjustments right at the end. And we kind of don't want that, or at least I don't want that. I want kind of a cleaner look in this particular case. So the way that we can resolve that is first what we're going to do at this stage is we need to kind of collapse all of this. And you can do this by either merging all the layers or if you still want to preserve some of the work you've done, what I prefer to do is a copy merge and then paste it as a new layer. And then from here, now what I can do is say effects, distortion effects, and pixelate. And then if I make sure that my block width, the width in particular, is 2, now what that's going to do is average that left and right deviation that you saw there, right? So now every, every width looks like one single bar instead of those, you know, short bar, high bar, all in one region. So then we can hit OK. Um, but you'll see we still have some aliasing just as it was trying to average, you know, those different bars there. And I'm not super worried about, you know, the accuracy of the height of the bars. So then we can once again go to adjust, brightness, contrast, and threshold. And it's kind of one of those things where, you know, if you want the bars to be taller, you can bring up a much higher number, you know, in, in terms of what it takes in the averaging. Or if you want them to be shorter, then you can just choose a lower number. Uh, I'm fine with the lower number in this case. So now that looks pretty good. We've kind of reduced that high fidelity audio wave now into this sort of more, you know, reduced fidelity, nice single bar pattern. And just to add, you know, a few more interesting effects to it, we'll turn off our group here. So all we have is our raster and this new layer that we created here. And we can just simply take the selection tool and kind of grab everything across the middle. And then say, edit, cut, and then we'll kind of remove the selection and then we can say, paste as new layer. And so then what you kind of see is it pasted it in a really like set, centralized position, but that's not really helpful for what we're trying to do. So what I'm going to actually do is turn on one of my guides, the crosshair one, so that I can see where visually where the middle of my image is. And then I can grab this new layer here and then kind of move it 
up. And then I can also grab the lower layer and then move that one down so that I've got sort of this, you know, nice split, but I can I can make sure that they're at least somewhat somewhat equidistant from the center. Then I can go back and turn off my guides by saying clear all. And what remains is just adding a little bit of detail. So we can create a new vector layer, add some text. This particular wave or audio wave that I, you know, am using here is actually the song To a Wild Rose. So I can type that as like the, the label. It's not easy to see because I made the fill white, but I can very easily select the text and change that text to black and then just place that right in the center. If I create another vector layer, not a raster layer, but a vector layer, then I can take my pen tool and yeah, with a width of two and the straight, the straight line draw, I can click once then I can click again and I can drag, but if I hold shift, then it's gonna keep me nicely on that sort of horizontal plane there. But nothing is really visible because my, my stroke is not visible. So if I swap these two and then hit apply, now we've got our line there. And then if I wanna make things easy for myself, I have another script under vectors that does a mirror copy horizontally and then it places right on the other side there and there you have it perhaps we could use uh, the crop tool a little bit just to kind of bring bring some of that excess top and bottom in except I need to go free form if I don't want to adhere to a specific if I don't want to adhere to a specific set of dimensions And there you have it. We've taken a you know very standard view of an audio wave and then given it this more stylistic effect using just some very basic tools that are available in PaintShop Pro. So to close, once again, I, I, I hope you just found some tokens and nuggets of knowledge that you can use for other projects. This video was really just an exploration on trying to replicate an effect I've seen in other places. And I'm pretty happy with the end result and what it kind of did with the whole audio wave. But anyway, if you have any questions or if you would like to recommend content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new content I post, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link on the TV. And I'll see you guys next time.